Hello everyone and welcome to the round glass review for the Sony FE 40mm f2.5 G. Sony released this lens in March 2021 and it is still available new as of this video's recording in March 2024. Typical lens uses include general photography and subjects, but to me this lens excels especially as a street photography lens. The angle of view is wide enough to allow a scene to be captured with a little bit of room to crop. The internal autofocus means that this lens will be discreet when in use, and the focal length gives this lens a nice, fairly true to human perception field and angle of view. And that allows this lens also to take portraits in a flattering manner. For your bottom line up front, this is a great general use lens for most every user. In fact, Unless you absolutely need something faster, this lens would, for almost everyone, be a better standard prime lens than the Sony 50mm f1.8 because the focal length for this lens is highly useful in far more settings. Your focal length and angle of view are 40mm and 57 degrees on full frame, 60mm and 39 degrees on APS-C. The aperture range is 2.5 to 22. The element and group count are 9 and 9. The design type, and this is a bit of a guess on my part, but given the negative elements up front, it looks like a sonar or sonar derived design to me. The filter size is 49 millimeters. The closest focus is 25 centimeters, which in the US is 0.0144 USS Enterprise nuclear carrier at published maximum speed seconds. The drive type is both autofocus and manual focus, but the manual focus is drive-by-wire. Native mount is Sony E full frame. Dimensions are 68 by 45 millimeters, and the weight is 173 grams. All right, here's my hot take on this lens. It's gonna be good for most things. Two uses stand out as sleeper uses that may not be immediately obvious. Street and portrait use. We'll cover how to use this lens well for each of those settings right now. For street photography, the aperture ring on this lens is a great tool. You can specify a specific aperture setting, and 2.5 is a good one for this use. And then you have a lot of control over your images, and specifically how the depth of field is used to isolate subjects. My technique for street photography, right now as I record this anyway, is to set the autofocus to face priority and use manual aperture and shutter control settings with automatic ISO to allow for proper exposures. This technique gives you a lot of control over how much, or little, or none, image shake you want in your photos. For portraits, this lens's control button can be set as a toggle switch that turns auto and manual focus on and off, and the built-in autofocus manual focus switch could also be used if there's another function you want the button to perform, such as, say, depth of field preview. This is an ideal use for this as you can manually focus portraits and ensure critical and accurate focus is where you want it to be. This is a good override to use for people who wear glasses as autofocus systems can be thrown off by the manner in which glasses shift the focus point of a person's eye. Another good use for this lens will be product and product detail photography. The close focus point of 25 centimeters means that product photos on a tabletop studio can be successful unless the items are very small. This is another setting where the aperture ring can be highly useful as it will allow for consistent depth of field with program shooting. One other great use of this lens, the aperture ring specifically, will be videography. Setting the aperture on the ring gives precise control over exposure in lighting. Yes, you can do that on the camera too, but using the aperture ring for that is a nice way of forcing yourself to remember to apply the correct setting. One last use idea. This lens is easily pocketed and can be taken anywhere. The lightweight makes it great for hiking and as a carry around lens or for travel. A final note on this lens, it's good. It photographs people well, but it's also a bit sterile. The only thing about this lens that adds any image character other than say sharpness, let's say, is the way that it creates light loss in the scene. As we're going to see in just a handful of seconds, this lens performs in a stunning manner from a technical perspective. That does generally translate into good image performance, but at times the photos from this lens feel clinical. 
All right, let's take a look at the dots test chart. And you can see here, I think, the first use of my revised test chart in this series. The central crosshairs are designed to help me ensure that images taken for this test are aligned in the same manner. I wish I had thought of this before I sat down one day to take all of the test photos for most of the lenses I'll be reviewing through 2026. Anyway, uh, let's go in for the 100% center crop and we'll see what looks like a hint of chromatic aberration, but in reality is just some monitor screen glow. Moving out to the corners, we see a slight amount of sagittal astigmatism that appears beyond the APS-C image area and is slightly uneven across the four corners. The upper right corner is the worst in this regard, though the performance is still highly commendable from a technical perspective and would lend this lens to being suitable for night sky astrophotography. I like it when lens makers tell us the design type. Thank you, Zeiss, because you guys do that consistently. But Sony does not, and that means I have to guess. This looks like a sonar-derived design owing to the strong negative element up front. The elements behind the aperture, which I placed as a best guess as the design I found didn't indicate aperture placement, should do a good job of providing even light spreading for uniform and pleasing light loss. Do they do that? Uh, we'll find out in a few minutes. Breathing is relatively minor across a 0.7 meter range from near the closest focus point to about a meter away from the camera. Most amateurs will have no issues with the breathing this lens exhibits. The aperture is stepped in third stop increments with the aperture ring on the lens. The front element is stationary and non-rotating. The focus throw is fly-by-wire and the handling on that will vary with your camera's focus settings. Focus damping is not applicable due to the fly-by-wire focusing, but you will want to fine-tune your manual focus settings on your camera to make sure this lens behaves as you want. The autofocus effect on audio is NA because the focus motor is silent. Sharpness is simply staggering and emphasized by the way this lens delivers subject isolation when wider than f5.6. Build quality is very good, though I'm not completely sold that the aperture ring design and feel were the best that Sony could do. If I could make two changes to it, it would be nice if the milled texture spanned the ring's entire width and if the aperture markings were printed on flat recesses within that milled shape. The detent feels nice, but an A-mode lock would have been nice as I've more than once accidentally bumped this lens from A to 22. Contrast is very good, even in raw straight out of camera images, and after processing, colors can sometimes seem hyper-realistic, which is a nice way of saying fake, and some subjects really exemplify that because of the way the contrast works coming out of this lens. With portraits especially, you may find that you need to dial your contrast back. Aperture stars start to form at f2.8, get smeary from f4 to 5.6, reverse into fans at f8 and hang out there until f22, which is where they look the best. Out-of-focus areas are exceptional and highly pleasing with specular point source highlights that can easily complement subjects, and circles of confusion also blend into, at least at the widest apertures, relatively smooth blurry areas. Also, blurry and sharp areas have clear and distinct separation, which not all lenses deliver. As noted earlier in the sharpness sentences, this is a significant reason why this lens has stunning subject isolation. This, as I understand it, is a key performance metric that Sony focuses their engineering time on and it pays off well for them. Distortion is a curious thing. With this lens focused close at graph paper, distortion is functionally zero. But looking at these two real-world photos, verticals near the edges exhibit strong bowing that distracts from the image. This seems to indicate that the 40mm f2.5G has distortion when the whole image circle is used and none when the lens is focused close and much of the image circle is cut off. Light loss is going to have two sets of photos. The first is the typical white screen up close at infinity focus. This series shows that the lens exhibits relatively even-ish light loss from the centers to the corners at f2.5 and f2.8, with some residual light loss hanging out across all the apertures. In a real-world setting, which we'll again see through all of the apertures here, these are taken, by the way, at the closest focus point, 
we can see that light loss is a highly pleasing aspect of the image and that the light loss is even and complements the subject, especially when you're using center frame subjects well. Flare never manifested for me with this lens, even testing for it without the lens hood on. Ghosting was very hard to achieve and in most cases will likely never manifest for most users, especially with the lens hood. I was able to obtain two examples of ghosting with the lens hood off and the sun just out of frame. Barring this specific test, I never had ghosting from this lens and I doubt you will either. Balance with cameras is good and the overall size and weight as well as focusing ring, aperture ring, autofocus manual focus switch, and function button are all placed well. The Sony FE f2.5 G is a great general lens that has solid chops for street, product, landscape, and portrait photography. As a general all-around lens, the 40mm f2.5 G finds itself on my camera almost all of the time. I know many Sony photographers who would say the same thing. This lens stands as a testament to how good Sony's optical engineering team is at lens design. The more that I use Sony optics, the more impressed I am at their image result and image delivery. But here's the thing. The real takeaway you should have from this video, and frankly every video in this series, lenses do not exist to photograph a test chart. Lenses do not exist to photograph graph paper and white screens and fairy lights hanging in a dark bathroom. Lenses exist to record images that stir in us an emotion, a connection with the world, and, in their highest and best use, other people. Nothing a camera or lens does is more important than the equipment's ability to deliver an image that brings us closer to those around us, period. The Sony FE 40mm f2.5 G allows us as photographers to, without any hindrance or compromise in the interface or image quality, do the work that photography challenges us with. The best photographs humanity has ever created allow a photographer and subject to connect to a future viewer, an unknown person who will see that image in a day, year, century, or longer, and through that image connect to better understand themselves, the world, or other people. That is our mission as photographers, and all the stuff we talk about beyond that is secondary to accomplishing that goal.